Hey everyone, and if you've been um, seeing my tweets and things lately, you'll you probably realise that I've been lucky to get an iPhone, and it's something I've been putting off for a long time. Um, I was just sort of waiting for the 3GS to come out, but now it's out. Um, it's certainly, certainly, I stabbed it up very quick. And I always did say that as soon as I did get it, I would probably wouldn't um, log about the iPhone, because I didn't think it would be fair, because a lot of people um, still don't have them, but then... I changed my mind when I came across a certain application called RunKeeper and just when I started thinking about how many uses it has in the class. So I'm going to show you what it's about and how it can be used and give you an example of using it. RunKeeper is pretty cool and um, it actually runs from an iPhone and it uses the GPS basically to um, track runs, riding, cycling, um, hiking, skiing, walking, etc. But the cool thing is um, it, it, it tells you your speed and your you know your your distance and your time and everything. And it also tracks your elevation and your rise um, across the course of um, your run. The good thing is when you actually return from your run you get access to a Google map and that's become very handy. So your Google map and your path for your run is then attached to a Google map and you can see exactly where you've gone. So you can see I started at the green pin and I've, you know, I've run around the town of Bort and yeah, it's, it's very handy. And what it actually does is it shows you your start time, your end time, your duration, your distance in miles or kilometers depending on what you like, and your average speed and the amount of um, feet or meters that you actually climb and an approximation on the calories burnt. So in terms of a PE teacher that's, that's some really valuable information to have. The cool part down here is, is looking at, um, it's a bit of a trend to show you how speed and elevation change and you can see there's a direct link between um, the speed and the elevation. So as I remember this part of the run it was a really really steep climb as that actually happened my speed has dramatically dropped and that's that's pretty clear all the way along. Elevation drops, speed rises. So there's another good um, explanation there that could link to lots of different classes in, in PZ. And the good thing is when you go back over your run you can see the blue the blue dot is basically moving around and showing me exactly where I was at that stage when I was running that speed as you can see. Now you can probably see also that there are little things that look like pictures and what RunKeeper actually lets you do is to take geotag pictures which can then be accessed later on and reference the exact spot at which you took them and this is really good so what I actually did was um, while I was while I was uh, making my way around town I was taking pictures of different things and one of the pictures I actually took was of the lake and just talking about the drought and and then way around I took some pictures of more things including the sign that welcomes you into the town all the way up to my school and it's a very very cool way to create a basically a bit of a, a virtual tour of a particular place so if you were to go around this particular map and click on the different pictures, you could see what I was basically looking at when I got to that point of the map. Now, all of this basically happens automatically. All you have to do is just select start on your app, on the app, and it does the rest for you, which is very, very handy. Now, I was sort of thinking, um, I'm going on an outdoor ed trip on the weekend, and I'm thinking that I will be using this to plot the actual walking that we actually do, and at different stages I'll be taking pictures that link with the stuff that we're learning in class. Now, you know, this isn't just something outdoor LP teacher could use. Um, any teacher could use this to set up a virtual learning tour for any particular subject. So, you know, you, it might be a, a tour of, as I've done, some of the famous landmarks of your town, or important things of your town, and you get the kids to write about their, their journey in an English aspect. You could actually um, have the kids create a working walking tour of some of the historical um, or you know controversial 
things in a certain town. You know, it, it could, you could be taking them to famous landmarks, you could take them to um, you know, schools and all sorts of different facilities and, and, and basically create a, a walking tour of that particular place that people can then interact with and, you know, and see all the different um, information that it provides. So the good thing is here, in an ideal world, every kid would be able to do this and they'd have their own, but we're not at that stage yet where every kid has their own iPhone. But it isn't, you know, too much to think that schools, you know, couldn't have an iPhone that could be shared amongst staff, given the wonderful things they can do. This is one of, you know, thousands of things it can do. Um, but yeah, if I was a teacher and, and I didn't have an iPhone and I saw the potential to use this, I certainly would consider having one um, so I could actually set up and then use these in my classes because um, there's countless ways you could create a virtual tour that would be very, very valuable for your students.